In today's fast-paced, distraction-filled world, staying consistent has become more challenging than ever. But what if I told you that mastering consistency is actually simpler than you thought? And it can be the secret to becoming a top 1% performer in any field you choose. Well, in this video, I'm gonna reveal the seven laws of consistency that if followed, will transform your life. I've learned them the hard way through years of trial and error and also from coaching high performers in various domains as a mental performance coach. So let's get started. So law one is one I've had to learn from years of trial and error in trying to regularly post videos on this YouTube channel. So I started this channel in 2020 during the height of the pandemic and my goal was to create a video every single week. And in my first year on YouTube, I did just that, 52 videos published. But then in my second year, I only posted 23 videos as the world opened up again and there were so many more distractions and social opportunities to engage in. But then in year three, I posted 37 videos and in my fourth year, which I've just crossed, I posted 58 videos. This is despite being busier than ever with various other social life and work commitments. So how have I got back to a solid base of consistency? Well, in the past year, I've strictly followed the law of batch wherever possible. Today, right now, as I'm recording this video, it's actually the 4th of June, 2024. But if you're watching this video on the day it goes live, then it's the 5th of July, 2024. Batching allows you to keep a streak going during those inevitable times where other commitments and priorities get in the way. So whenever I have an extended a trip away from home for a few weeks or have other projects coming up that will take up most of my time and energy, I plan ahead and get a few more videos made ahead of time so that I can keep the streak going. And the same goes for various other things in life. Something like batch cooking is the best thing any performer who cares about their nutrition should engage in when they know that they have little time during the week to cook meals. This can help you cut out convenience and junk foods that quickly erode a consistent week or two of healthy eating. Another example is studying. If you know that you have a busy week ahead, spend a morning on the weekend and batching your study materials. Summarize your notes, create flashcards or mind maps in advance so that you can then easily review them in shorter focus sessions throughout the week. This helps maintain your study consistency even when time is tight. Say if you're a student athlete where you're juggling your studying with all your practices and games. Life throws up all kinds of things that threaten to derail your progress. Things like last minute social events, family emergencies, or having to spend hours on hold to the phone to utility companies. So the only way to protect yourself from these breaking your consistent progress is to batch anything that in theory you can do in advance. And this also ties into the second law. So one other area of my life that I've remained consistent in is keeping fit through running five times a week. I've managed to run 7,794 miles over the past six years, meaning I've run on average over hundred miles every month for over 70 months. And it would have been more if it wasn't for a few injuries here and there over the years. Ooh, you're hard showing off. And what's kept me consistent more than anything with this part of my life is the law of preempting blockades. Whenever I have to travel and stay in a new hotel, I always do one of two things. One, make sure I book a hotel near some good running routes, or two, make sure I book a hotel that has a gym and a treadmill because it's way too easy to let a consistent habit fall off when you're in a different environment. Our usual routines and rituals are all suddenly thrown up into the air because of a lack of familiarity. And in those moments, the easy option is to just say, I'll get back to it when I get back. But the danger with this is if you spend even a few days away from your usual routines, they become harder and harder to get back into the swing of. So you need to ensure that you have a plan to keep them going, even when everything else around you makes it super easier to just put them on pause for a few days or a couple of weeks. So if there's something you're desperate to stay consistent with, even when thrown out of your usual routines and environments, ask yourself the question, what measures do I need to take in order to make it as easy as possible for me to stick to my habit of? And then actively plan out what steps that are 100% inside of your control need to be taken. Because they say failing to prepare means that you're preparing to fail. If you want to optimize your preparation so that you can perform your best more consistently, then you should join the waitlist for my peak performance community, The Arena. Inside The Arena, you'll experience group coaching and Q&A sessions led by me, exclusive content that will help you build a top 1% mentality, and you'll also get to learn from the experiences of high performers from around the globe. Sign up using the link below. But I get it, sometimes sticking to something when taken outside of your usual routines and environment is super tough. I've experienced this many times before too. You may not have the time or energy to stick to something. So in those cases, you need to rely on law three, one is better than zero. So say you're a student athlete, when exam season rolls around, it's very easy to let your practice and training slip off completely because of all the time that you need to devote to your study. You literally don't have time to consistently stick to your typical two hour workouts. But instead of sacking them off completely, just readjust things to a still acceptable level. Do a one hour workout or even a 45 minute one for those three or four weeks that you're going all in on studying. This still keeps momentum going, even if you're just ticking along for those weeks, which means it's so much easier to get back to your two hour workouts once your exam have finished. The act of just showing up is the biggest thing when it comes to consistency. Even if it's not to your usual standards, being able to finish the day and say to yourself, I still got something done, 
is a huge motivator and this will help compound your growth and development over time. At certain points in life, just keeping the streak going becomes more important than the quality or quantity of the work that you're doing or producing. But I understand that there are days where your motivation is super low and sticking to the thing that you're trying to be consistent with feels harder than ever. What can you do in those situations to just crack on and keep at it? Well, that's where law four comes in. Use visual cues. This might sound super simple, but it's incredibly effective. The idea is to use a visual reminder that indicates some form of progress, such as the basic act of putting red crosses through a wall calendar or using a health or workout tracker that shows how many days in a row that you've actually recorded activity. We as humans naturally get a buzz out of visibly seeing our progress or a streak of something. Think about people weighing themselves every day on a weight loss journey or ways that social media companies keep us addicted to their platforms. For example, if you use Snapchat when you were younger, there's a good chance that at one point you cared massively about using the app every single day so that you had ever increasing street counts. Seeing a number grow or a calendar fill up with marks gives you a tangible sense of achievement. It makes your progress visible and real, which reinforces your commitment and just motivates you to keep going. So when it comes to whatever you're trying to stay consistent with, just looking at the streak on the days that you feel demotivated gives you a boost to just get on with it because you know deep down that breaking the streak will be painful. So the key is to find a visual cue that works for you and just use it to keep track of your progress. Ask yourself what habit or goal am I trying to stick with and how can I create a visual representation of my progress? And when you think of the main overarching benefit of a visual cue, basically what it comes down to is a sense of reward. It feels good and gives us a little boost of dopamine to feel like progress is being sustained. And this ties into the next law because being consistent is a grind. If it wasn't, everyone would be insanely consistent. It relies on doing hard things day after day and week after week come rain or shine. So it's got to be worth it. You need to feel like it's all worth it. And that's why law five is to reward yourself. At the end of each week or month, you need to celebrate your efforts because a lot of the things that we try to stay consistent with are long-term projects, like athletes training for four years to reach the Olympics or entrepreneurs working 70-hour weeks for a decade before their company finally goes public. No one can stay 100% consistent for indefinite periods of time without some form of reward or recognition. We all need a pick-me-up or a pat on the back for our efforts every now and then. It's why bodybuilders allow themselves a cheat meal once every couple of weeks or why entrepreneurs treat themselves and their staff to a 4 p.m. Friday beer in the office. Working hard is hard, but it doesn't have to be completely miserable. Rewarding yourself not only provides a moment of pleasure, but also has other psychological benefits. It reinforces the positive behavior, making you more likely to continue being consistent in the future. This is what psychologists call operant conditioning. Deep down, we're all just like dogs who do tricks in exchange for a treat. But we don't want to become overly reliant on these rewards so that we only do the thing because of the reward, like a kid who only does his homework because of the promise of a gold star. But the occasional reward helps break up the monotony of the grind, providing a mental break and renewed motivation to keep pushing forward, especially during the toughest times. So whether it's a couple of hours of video games, a couple of pints on the weekend, or taking yourself to see a movie, reward yourself for sticking things out. But look, there will be occasions where for whatever reason, consistently does finally become impossible. Where something pops up outside of your control and you have to drop everything. Those circumstances that you just can't do anything about. What then? What happens if that finally means that your streak is broken? Well, law six is you're allowed to miss one. Look, as said before, life is unpredictable and sometimes even the best laid out plans can be derailed by unforeseen circumstances. So it's okay to miss one day, one workout or one act of whatever it is that you're trying to be consistent with. Think of it like a get out of jail free card. It's for those rare occasions when you truly need it, allowing you to reset and regroup without feeling guilty or defeated. However, it's crucial to recognize that allowing yourself to miss one doesn't give you permission to give up altogether. One missed day shouldn't turn into two, three, and so on. The key to is acknowledge the setback, learn from it, and then recommit to your consistency. Even with the YouTube videos I've produced over the last year, there have been a couple of occasions where I've not managed to post a video within exactly seven days of the last. It sometimes had to be eight or nine days, but then I make sure I quickly get back to my usual publishing schedule for the next few videos that I make. It's not like you ever expect or want to use this lifeline, but just know at the back of your mind, it's okay to miss a day in the most extreme examples. You won't go back to square one. Many people take years to learn this, but the truth is you don't have to be perfect to be consistent. And so it's now time to cover our final law, which may be the most important of all embrace imperfection. Throughout this journey of consistency, it's crucial to understand that perfection is not attainable or possible. We all face setbacks and fall short of our own expectations at some point in time. But here's the thing, those setbacks are not failures, they're opportunities for growth. 
To be consistent for years on end requires that you must develop a growth mindset. The idea that individuals who believe that their abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work are more likely to embrace challenges and persist in the face of setbacks. By embracing imperfection, we cultivate that growth mindset. We learn to look at setbacks as stepping stones rather than roadblocks, and we become more resilient. In the areas I've shown consistency in my life, a perfect performance remains super rare. In the six years I've been running, there's probably been less than five times that I feel I've had a 10 out of 10 run. And with the 170 YouTube videos I've made, there's probably been two or three ones that I'm 100% happy with. But that's fine because I'm not chasing perfection. If I was, I would have given up on these areas a long, long time ago. Perfection is a very occasional bonus that you only get paid a handful of times in your life. And if you want to let go of your perfectionism for good, then you should watch this video next.